Hello, this is Business Now, reaching you live from Ibrand TV News Studios in Lagos, Nigeria. Coming up, Navy arrests 22 suspected oil thieves, recovers 6 million litres of stolen crude. The Food and Agriculture Organization projects that by June and August 2022, 18 million Nigerians will experience food insecurity. Kenya's debt repayment towards China-funded infrastructure projects increase to 73.48 billion shillings. And Asian stock markets rise after Wall Street falls closer to bear territory. Hello again, and thanks very much for joining us. And here, business stories making headlines. So these are on Michael Nath. The Nigerian Navy says its operatives on internal security operations in the Niger Delta region have arrested 22 suspected oil thieves and recovered over 6 million liters of stolen crude. The operation carried out by a team under Operation Dakata Dabarao is part of the Navy's efforts to rid the Niger Delta area of oil thieves and illegal bunkering. Director Naval Information, Commodore Ayo Vogan, who made this known in a statement, said the court has made breakthroughs in which over 10 billion naira worth of stolen crude oil and petroleum products were seized. Ayo Vogan also said that the suspects have been handed over to the relevant authorities for prosecution. Yedo State Governor Godwin Obaseki has lamented the over-dependence on oil is killing the nation's economy. Obaseki disclosed this when members of the Plantation Owners Forum of Nigeria paid him a courtesy visit in Benin City. He said the dependence on oil is unsustainable and that increased investment in agriculture will enable the country to grow sufficient fruit produce and ensure food security create jobs and improve the livelihoods of citizens. The governor said, and I quote, Nigeria's future looks bleak due to the over-reliance on crude oil. There is an urgent need to diversify and invest in agriculture as the dependence on oil has not been able to enhance the global competitiveness of our economy, end of quote. A frontline microeconomy and now analysts and uh, former Director General of the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, uh, Muda Yusuf, has described the Nigeria manufacturing industry as near comatose. Uh, Dr. Muda, while addressing stakeholders in the industry in Lagos State, said the Niger nation's economy cannot get to its peak if the manufacturing sector contributes less than 9% to the nation's GDP. Iran TV senior reporter Aiboje Ikoria completes this story. For manufacturing, only 9% of the micro enterprises are in manufacturing, 23% of the small businesses, I mean of the small enterprises are in manufacturing, while 43% of the medium enterprises are in manufacturing. And according to the latest GDP data of the National Bureau of Statistics, Manufacturing contribution to our GDP was only 9% as of 2021. That, of course, uh, underscores how weak our manufacturing sector is. Dr. Mudo Yusuf is not too fine with the way the manufacturing industry in Nigeria is handled, especially as the industrial hub in the nation's biggest commercial city is fast becoming a shadow of itself with most of its industrial sites turned to either worship centers, eateries, or event centers. Imagine the Nigerian market to scale up our industry, industrial capacity utilization. We should ensure the full and effective implementation of Executive Order 003 on patronage of locally produced goods. We should address the escalating energy costs, particularly the cost of diesel, the cost of gas, and now there's a crisis around innovation for work. We need to support the small businesses with business development skills as well as technical skills. On the streets of Lagos, most Lagosians believe that unless something is urgently done, there will soon be no industry 
in the country producing. From a company, I collapse. There are no men of them move away from Nigeria. What does that mean now? Because of light. And again, look, if, you, if you look at it now, uh, this will uh, matter. For them to run the, 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 the agenda, uh, it's not easy for them. I think we should create more um, job opportunities. We should open more industries for people to work, render the service that people need, and they get paid, they are able to feed their family, they are able to pay their bills. And by that, the country keeps growing. Keep, uh, nobody is becoming a liability to the government. The government is not, the go, um, people are not complaining that the government is not giving them anything. Experts believe that the factors responsible for the continuous collapse of industrialization in the country are influx of cheap and substandard products, crisis in the foreign exchange market, the epileptic power supply, and multiple taxation imposed on small businesses by the three tiers of government, amongst others. I, Boji Horia. Reporting for TV News. The National Pension Commission says only seven states had group life insurance cover for their workers as of the end of March 2022. This means that 29 states did not have insurance covers for their workers within this period. Figures obtained from a PENCOM on summary of the implementation status of states with valid group life and sinking funds as of March 33rd. 31, 2022, showed that only Lagos, Federal Capital Territory, Oshun, Ondo, Edo, Ekiti, and Kaduna states had covers for their workers. The pension industry regulator explained that Kaduna replaced the group life insurance with a sinking fund, which is domiciled with the Central Bank of Nigeria and the state has commenced setting aside funds in the account for the settlement of death benefits. The Food and Agriculture Organization has projected that by June and August 2022, the number of food insecure insecurity in Nigeria would be around 18 million people, of which 620,000 are foreseen to face CH Phase 4 emergency and 13,550 CH Phase 5 catastrophe. For the West Africa region, where an estimated 27.3 million people are facing acute food insecurity, the number is projected to increase to an unprecedented 38.3 million between June and August 2022 if humanitarian interventions are not scaled up. This was revealed in the latest Crop Prospects and Food Situation Quarterly Global Report and Global Information and Early Warning System on Food and Agriculture Special Alert for West Africa, Sahel, released by FAO. FAO said the alarming high level of food insecurity is due to localized shortfalls in cereal production in 2021, worsening conflicts, high food prices, and macroeconomic challenges compounded by the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic. The recent Consumer Price Index report released by the National Bureau of Statistics states Nigeria's inflation rose to 16.82% in April 2022, following a similar uptick recorded in the previous month as a result of the increase in energy and food prices. This presents the highest rate recorded since August 2021. They established uh, to establish how inflation has affected price price of commodities. Iran TV correspondent Kali Obi did a market survey. And now Kali joins me in the studio to shed more light on this. Kali, you're welcome. Thank you, Nat. How now, you doing? Fine. Uh, you went to the market to carry out a survey on yes, food prices for last week and this week. Please, can you give us a rundown of what you have? Okay, looking at the food prices, the high rate on food commodity in Nigeria as a whole, the prices have been pushed up by a host of um, factors that's ranging from the supply chain bottlenecks, increase in security and labor uh, there's no much people working in the farm because of the insecurity that is in Situation the country. In and um, the increase in oil prices, energy costs, input costs, feed and fertilizer and labor and transportation. Okay. And uh, given to what um, the 
the minister, as um, Mogaji said, he said he noted that there, there were little rooms for return to more stable market conditions given high input cost, cost and uh, with the ongoing um, pandemic as well as the uncertainty lingering the climate uh, condition. So, um, and all this put in place is, mm. is, is not going to fall back on the economy to fall back in to the nigerian people at something good for food commodity that everything is going to go up and nobody's thinking nobody uh, you, uh, they say we'll keep praying but when will it be answered okay so um going back to last week uh if we say how much was tomato a basket of tomato in the market yeah. it was nine thousand and today it's 15 17 19 thousand my goodness so uh is it coming down uh, yeah, it came down. It comes down for some time, and uh, before you know it, it goes up. No, but again. It, it was higher last week. It, no, it was lower. No, it last was lower week. last week. Last week it was lower. Today is gone today up. it's gone up. Today is fifteen, seventeen to nineteen thousand. And for the food, for the local rice, local rice is from the range of twenty-seven to thirty thousand. That's for the local rice, the, the Nigerian rice. And if we're going to the foreign rice, we're looking at thirty to thirty-two thousand. So uh, one keeps wondering why are uh, why do people tend to buy more of the foreign rice than the local rice? Okay, but and, uh, because by so doing, we are patronizing our farmers, and that will encourage them to produce more. Don't you think so? Yes, I, I think that's what everybody should do. At least we need to encourage us. But when you say this is a local rice, this is a Nigerian rice, it's supposed to be cheaper. I remember in, the yes, day, in yes. those days when a bag of rice was 5,000, 6,000. Hmm. Then we still cry, oh, it's too much, it's too much. But today is multiple the price that it was before. So now if you're saying this is a local rice, Nigerians are expecting a bag supposed to be like 7,000 hmm. or 8,000. But this is 2730. That's for this month. For January, it was like 30, 32, wow. close to 40,000. Wow. So, again, so Nigerians are not saying, okay, we, this is our local rice. It's supposed to be cheaper. But because of all these things, the inclusion of the transportation, mm -hmm. the, from the fertilizer to the feed, to the increase in insecurity, the labor, people work, workers are not much because of insecurity in the country, the increase of oil prices and all this. This comes back because it's coming from the north. And one one. What one wonders what the federal government is doing about this because they are putting so much into farming to encourage farmers to produce more. It looks like the the impact is not yet being felt and the impact of the efforts being made by the federal government to encourage uh, uh, farmers to produce more. It looks like it's not being felt yet. It, yeah, it's not being felt by any, by the farmers or even we that we con the consumers because the farmers with, they have their complaint. Uh, if the government has to start up something, then mm. they have to start with the insecurity first in the country. That wow. has to be tackled first. Because I can, you can give me a farm as a farmer for me to go farm, and, I, and my life is not insured. I am going mm. to the farm, and I'm, I don't even think I might go back to my family at the end of the day. You get as a farmer. I'm just putting myself in that yeah, place. I so, yeah. you get. so the insecurity is not helping out. And the increase in diesel. Before this used to be this amount, but now it's six, seven hundred. Who can afford that? That's for the drivers. And still the drivers bring them to Lagos. They pay the, uh, the, the securities that they meet on the road, the police, the mm. these, the that, the that. The, the. So is, if you're saying, okay, let's know what the government can do is first, they'll start with the farm itself how much if you're giving me a land of a, a land to farm on how much am i paying you back because this thing comes with grants and, and loans and all that then if i'm able to say okay i'm going to sort this out I, I'm, I'm giving a farm by a land to farm on from the government but they are being giving incentives as well to encourage them to like encourage uh, give the the interest uh, comes in uh, single digits in most cases but how many uh, which of the states are are, are, are this land being given to that's also what we consider is more of the north, is mm. more of the... Uh, it, so let's bring it back to the east, to the west, where we can't even bring tomatoes from, where we can't even bring rice from, because the rice that we get from the east is from the abakaliki. And how many people eat the abakaliki rice? Mm. So if we're going to give out farm, if the government is going to give out farm, then it should be spread around the states. Mm. Mm. We know some soils are not good for some crops, some soils are not... With the climate change... Uh, a lot of things are happening.
So if the government is going to give our farms, then they should also consider what other crops can be brought from other states. Mm. Then it can be a secular thing. Okay, now beyond rice and uh, tomatoes, all right? Rice, oh. tomato, plantain, uh -huh. what, mango. Yeah, what about other food products, other, other food stuff? Uh, okay, for rice, that one has been sorted. When we go to the maize, you say, okay, this is the maize season. They're supposed to be maize or corn, but there's not. It's still expensive. It is. It is expensive. Honestly, yeah. The corn you get for 50, 100, you get it for 200, 250. Mm. Mm. And you mm. don't blame the sellers because they will tell you, oh, I go to the market, I buy a bag that I'm supposed to buy for 6,000, which was sold last year for 6,000. But right now you're buying a bag for 18,000, mm. 20,000. And they will buy the charcoal that they will use in roasting the corn or whatever they will use to cook it. So you get the transportation that they used to transport it from the market where they go to get it. Paying the ad bureaus, paying the this, paying the that is a whole lot. Mm -hmm. And you can't, you can't um, look at them and say, oh, you're supposed to come down with your price. No. They still have to have everything to be able to make up the money they use in buying this. And at the end of the day, they still tell you, oh, I'm selling to make 1000 I'm selling to make 500 mm -hmm. But you can't doubt that. Why you can't doubt the dam is the extent the country is going to? Mm. Okay, we're looking at um, other food. Okay, we're looking at the fish. Okay, fish is one of, we say the poor man is the people that eat the fish. You only talk about uh, uh, when you go to fresh fish, then it's okay, the rich man, that's their food. It's no longer the it's case. Not, it's not, it's <laughs> no, no. Because if make child is dry, mm. <laughs> importation of um, fish will be high. Mm. So a whole lot of things, the climate change, everything is affecting the food commodity. Mm. Thank you so very much, uh, uh, Kali, uh, mm. for that analysis. And we okay. look forward to having more from you uh, okay. in the coming weeks. No problem. Thank you. We'll take a short break now. But in the next uh, line of news, we have global food supply chain at risk from malicious hackers. Details of this and more after this break. Stay with us. Are you a business owner looking for the right exposure to attract massive clients to your brand? The long search is definitely over. SME Hub allows you to showcase your products and services to a wide range of viewers and buyers nationwide. For further inquiries, please call Alera on 081-323-43262 or you can send an email to alera.ogudere at ibrandtv.com. Grow your brand and boost your business on SME Hub, live on iBrand TV, where business comes first. You're watching Business Now on iBrand TV, Lagos. Now to Africa scene. Kenya's debt repayments towards China-funded infrastructure projects have more than doubled to a record 73.48 billion shillings this financial year on the back of increased clearance of principal sums after the grace period elapsed. Expenditure data published this week by the Treasury shows the amount repaid to Chinese lenders has surged 135.15% compared with 31.25 billion shillings in the year ended uh, June 2021 when a moratorium due to COVID-19 shocks was in place. The cash was wired to the lenders, Exim Bank of China and China Development Bank, in two batches of 43.62 billion shillings in the third quarter of the current fiscal year around January and 29.86 billion shillings in July 2021. According to the provisional data, the repayments to Chinese lenders accounted for 81.4% of the 90.26 billion shillings that the Treasury spent on servicing bilateral debts in the nine-month period through March. Airtime and core data tax collections fell by 19.8% or 7.4 billion shillings last year on reduced use following the increment of excise duty from 15% to 20%. Mm. 
Kenya National Bureau of Statistics data shows the taxman collected 29.8 billion shillings last year, a drop from 37.2 billion shillings in 2020. The government imposed a higher tax last year through the Finance Act 2020 in a bid to collect at least 8 billion shillings in extra revenues from Safaricom Airtime and uh, Telcom Kenya. The charge was passed on to consumers with Airtime or Airtel increasing the cost of making calls to 2.78 shillings per minute and Safaricom to 4.87 shillings per minute for peak time up from 4.30 previously. Now the new tax had a dampening effect on the use of voice and data that saw companies record a slowdown of revenues ultimately hitting tax collections. Now to foreign scene, Germany's finance minister says the group of seven leading economies are set to agree on more than 18 billion shillings or pounds in aid for Ukrainian defense efforts as meetings of uh, finance ministers close Friday. German finance minister Christian Linder uh, said the G7 nations are standing shoulder to shoulder with Ukraine because they are not only defending themselves, they are also defending values of G7 nations. The G7 finance ministers are also have grappled with the deepening inflation, uh, food security concerns, and the immediate effects of Russia's war in Ukraine during their talks. Asian stock markets rose Friday after Wall Street fell closer to bear territory. China cut a key interest rate and the Japanese inflation edged higher. Market benchmarks in Shanghai, Tokyo, Hong Kong and Sydney advanced. Oil prices fell more than $1 per barrel. Wall Street's benchmark S&P 500 index lost 0.6% on Thursday as rising interest rates, Russia's war on Ukraine and Chinese economic slowdown added to investor Unease. The benchmark is down 18.7% from its January high and close to the 20% decline that defines a bear market. Experts say modern smart farm machinery is vulnerable to malicious hackers, leaving global supply chains exposed to risk. It is feared hackers could exploit flaws in agricultural hardware used to plant and harvest crops. Agricultural manufacturing giant John Deere said it is now working to fix any weak spots in its software. A recent University of Cambridge report said automatic crop sprayers, drones and robotic harvesters could be hacked. The UK government and the FBI have warned that the threat of cyber attacks is growing. John Deere said protecting customers, their machineries and their data was a top priority. We'll go on a commercial break now and Perpetua will be here shortly to take more of the news here for you. The cosmetics and personal care industry globally generates an estimated annual turnover of around $400 billion over the last 20 years. In Nigeria, the beauty and personal care market could reach 3.2 billion euros by 2021, making Nigeria the rising star in sub-Saharan Africa. Products for hair and body care are predominant on the beauty market in sub-Saharan Africa, where face products and makeup remain marginal but have strong potential. Africa's largest economy clearly has a lot to offer. The Nigerian beauty and personal care market is currently worth more than $1.25 billion at retail and is forecast to reach more than $1.31 billion next year according to Euromonitor International. Tix includes a wide range of products from skincare items to makeup and beauty items. These are items that predominantly appeal to women and men alike to purchase beauty products even though men are interested in cosmetics. Nigeria has emerged as the investment destinations of choice to international firms aiming to capture the beauty and personal care market in the continent. 
The photography business is a very competitive industry. Every year, thousands of talented photo lovers consider turning their passion into a money-making business venture. Especially in a fiercely competitive marketplace like Nigeria, in which it is very easy for anyone to buy a digital camera and call themselves a professional photographer. According to some practitioners, a new photographer who wants a standard studio can start with a budget of 3.5 million naira. However, one can start with a lower budget of about 500,000 to 1 million naira, depending on the tools and cost of rent. On the average, the cost of photography equipment is around 294,790 naira. However, the price ranges from around 41,000 Naira to as high as 2.46 million Naira. Nigeria has a population of over 200 million people with a vibrant movie industry that produces 50 movies per week, generating annual revenue of approximately $590 million from between 2016 and 2021 helping the photography industry as a whole according to a recent research by the UN.